In today's video, we're going to design the bottom reinforcement of concrete being a very quick, fast, rapid, high speed, terrible way. And if you like the video and want to see more videos like this one, make sure you like, share, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell notification. <laughs> Having said that, let's get started. We're going to design this bridging beam, which is the exercise 7 of my new free ebook called 10 Resolved Exercises I Wish I Knew in My First Month into Structural Engineering. And it's free of course for you my friends and you can download the PDF from my website there's a link in the description below so just go to I'll show you here just go to my home page of the website scroll down and enter your email enter your name and I will email you a link so you can download the PDF Okay, back to the concrete beam. We know our factor bending moment that we need to design the beam for, which is 100 kilonewtons meters. We're gonna use 20 MPA concrete, 50 millimeters cover. I will try N16 bars at first, see if that works. I would suggest using bars between 12 and 32 millimeters. If you go over 32, the bar starts to get really heavy and you will need big blocks to carry them. The cross-section dimensions are given to us, but if you need to estimate a good rule of thumb for the depth of a simply supported reinforced concrete beam is a span divided by 13. And the width of the beam, I'll show you how you can work that out later in this video. The width of the beam is 350 millimeters, the depth is 400 millimeters, the effective depth of the beam, which is the distance from the extreme compression fiber to the centroid of the bottom bars. And that works out to be the total depth of the beam minus the cover, minus diameter of the legs, minus half of the diameter of the bottom bars. That works out to be 330 millimeters. Now that we have all the data we need, we're going to determine the required area of tension reinforcement. And to do so, we're gonna use this ninja formula below here which is the area of steel equals to moment divided by phi times fsy times 0.9d and in case you're asking yourself where did you get this formula from it is only a practical derivation of this formula here which you might have seen when you studied singly reinforced concrete beam. So the problem with this formula is that we don't know A because A is a function of the area of steel, which is exactly what we are trying to figure out. And if you use this formula, you would have to resolve a quadratic, quad, quadratic, quad, a quad, quadratic, quadratic equation, which I don't like it. No one likes it. I know you don't. Don't lie to me. Anyway, some mastermind found out that d minus a divided by 2 equals approximately 0.9d and that's how this formula was created. And we're going to double check this in the end, okay? Don't worry, we're not going to just blindly rely on this formula. We need to double check that. So let's plug the numbers into this equation and we get the area of steel is approximately 793 millimeters millimeters squared that means we need 4 and 16 bars and 4 and 16 bars will give us a total area of 804 millimeters squared let's say for example instead of n16 you had to use n20 bars you would have to go back here and change the effective depth and redo this calculation okay that was pretty much a less than a minute calculation okay and it, it is pretty it's quite accurate so you don't dare to say my video was a clickbait okay that, that was less than a minute you just needed to apply this formula is simple very simple before we proceed we're going to calculate the minimum steel reinforcement for this beam so that we make sure that the minimum is less than 804 we're just going to calculate this minimum steel reinforcement according to as according to this formula in as 3600 clause 8.1.6.1 and the minimum steel reinforcement for this beam is 182 millimeters squared which is way less than 800, uh, 804 before we are okay before we keep going let's check if 4 and 16 bars will fit in our beam you can either draw this in CAD or you can manually calculate it to manually calculate it you need to know that the spacing 
in between bars is 1.5 times the aggregate size and the aggregate size is usually 20 millimeters you need to know the side cover you need to know the diameter of the legs the diameter of the bars and the bend radius the bend radius is equal to two times the legs diameter okay so 350 which is the total width of the beam needs to be greater than two times the side cover which is 50 50 in each side plus two times the league's diameter which is one here one here plus four times the league's diameter that is two times league's diameter times two because you've got two band radius here plus four times four times the bottom bars diameter four times 16 plus three times three you've got one two three spacings in between bars three times 1.5 times 20 that is equal to 326 millimeters therefore we are okay all the bars fit nice and neatly in our beam so remember that we said that we will double check our results and make sure or 5mu is greater than 100 kilonewtons meters we're going to do this now now we have an area of steel that we can calculate a remember before we didn't have a that's why we had to use uh, the ninja formula but now we have we have the area of steel and we can calculate a we're just going to use this formula here to calculate a and we get that a is 70.03 millimeters after that we need to work out c c if you can't remember is the neutral axis depth in the stress um, when you calculate the stress the rectangular stress block concrete beam that is just a divided by this factor which is 76.3 12 and then finally we need to work out or k which is the neutral axis parameter and k must be less than 0 0.36 so we have an under reinforced concrete beam which means the reinforcement will yield before the beam reaches the ultimate limit state in flexion in most cases you should always design a concrete beam to be under reinforced so you have a ductile failure if for any reason the beam fails it will give out signs so if the beam is under reinforced and is under reinforced you can tell when it's gonna fail because it gives it gives out signs and everybody can simply run away no one's gonna die so after that we're gonna calculate the final moment check which is pretty much the same formula that we saw before rearranged to calculate phi mu so we get that phi mu is 100.79 kilonewtons meter which is greater than 100 kilonewtons meters therefore we are okay, it passes, no one's gonna die, the engineer is gonna get paid, everybody um, goes home happy, and that's it.